Hello, and welcome to this episode of Adventures in the Cloud. It is July 1st, Wednesday, and I guess we're finally into the second half of the year. It seems like just yesterday that we were kind of getting into 2020, and so much has happened in the last six months. And um, you know, we're, we're glad that we're able to do these virtual events together, um, you know, in spite of all the events happening around us. And you know our our thoughts and prayers go to all the people out there who are, you know, who are maybe having a hard time and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, today I'm really happy to bring on uh, Christian Schalk. So uh, let's get into it. Wait, not yet. All right, um, let's bring on Christian Schalk. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, Christian is here from, uh, I guess, the G Suite team and will be talking to us about AppSheet. So let's switch over now. How are you doing today, Christian? So, um, oh, there we go. Sorry, you were, you were slightly muted for a oh. little bit, but let, let's try again. How are you doing okay. today, Christian? Uh, My bad. All right. I'm doing great. I'm great. Ready to go. So let's let's have that. Yeah. Um, so I guess to, to start with, you know, for our viewers to give them a little background, you know, myself, I didn't really know what AppSheet was uh, for the longest time. <laughs> and so maybe it would be helpful um, to get us started with just like talking a little bit about what AppSheet is and, um, you know, yep. what it's good for and why people should check it out. Yeah. So um, I like we discussed, I do have some slides there that yeah. I share with you, but I could literally just explain. Yeah, we can it pop it over to the slides well. while we talk uh, through first, it. Would that be good? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to pop those slides up, it's, it's pretty good. That, that'll uh, mm -hmm. go to the first or the second slides, probably just to kind of give a little bit of a intro to what yeah. that app sheet is. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and uh, present or just go to the next slide, whatever's uh, fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so. First off, AppSheet is a newly acquired uh, product. Um, they were been around though for a number of years, at least five years. Um, back in January, uh, Google acquired them, and it was mainly meant to address kind of like a, a, a gap in technology from an overall coverage from a Google Cloud and G Suite uh, tech, developer technology mm -hmm. platform. Um, and so, like actually, on the next slide, it actually talks about how um, AppSheet fits into the overall IT landscape. So in Typical IT, you're going to need like your full stack, you know, software engineering staff to tackle like the like the large enterprise, uh, high complex projects. But there's this long tail of uh, IT needs that pretty much any enterprise yeah. is going to have to deal with. And so in, instead of having to have like you know full stack developers building custom solutions all over the place, uh, what we found in this space is that AppSheet. Uh, because of this no-code uh, approach, allows people to help themselves. So it's kind of like a, a citizen developer, or even just kind of like a, a, anyone who has data in Sheets or even in uh, SQL-based database mm -hmm. tables, they can turn on AppSheet and start to generate and then customize applications as they need fit. So that's essentially the the, the extent of what what this demo is. Just to kind of give it a, a introduction, and we'll walk through a a, a pretty fun demo. Uh, the next slide, I think. If you go to the next slide, it's a little bit more like what it is. It it's no code. It's meant for really anyone to just if they have their data, they can start to build an app sheet application. Uh, it's meant to be very iterative. So you can you, as you're updating the pieces of the app, you'll see a preview window automatically updates in real time. So you get this really close, uh, uh, constant uh, update. So it's very agile and it's it's generally it's powerful. It's like it has like a responsive web design, so it's very mobile friendly. That's not to say you can't do like desktop UIs with it as well. Uh, in my experience with AppSheet, so I actually helped out the the AppSheet product, the team on board. I actually flew up to Seattle uh, in January and got to meet the team quite closely, and we did a number of uh, of uh, shared exercises where we were also bringing a lot of G Suite customers into AppSheet so they can actually see and, and, and understand its value. Cool. Um, so that's basically it. So I, I, uh, I, I do have a slide at the end that shows how to get more info. We can refer to that at the end of our, our session here. But I think the next thing you could show the next slide. And uh, one of the things that, that 
I, I prepared, which is kind of fun. I'm actually going to walk, walk uh, you think through this is just how to build a, uh, a, like a project tracking application in just a few minutes. And it all starts with a spreadsheet. And then we're going to take that spreadsheet and build up the app. So without further ado, I'll hand it back to you, Feng, and then we can just kind of uh, walk through uh, showing how to build an application in yeah, just a few minutes. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I think the the overall kind of purpose of AppSheet is, is really interesting. And these kinds of UI-driven tools, for my part, I've found that getting your hands on it and kind of just getting familiar with the interface is so important because every single thing we use these days, right, comes with its own design language almost. And as a result, uh, a lot of times it may not um, map perfectly to our own mental model of how things should work, right? Every time some website we're using changes their homepage, we complain about the new layout, but eventually we, we get through it and we figure it out. And then the next time, they change it again and we're complaining again but um you know th this product you know is just like anything else has its kind of quirks and so i'm excited to um, be able to play around with that kind of get our questions answered um, and also you know let the people see what it looks like to really use it and not just like show some screenshots and demo uh, and like demo outputs but like really demonstrate how it uh, functions and as a reminder, you, everyone watching, you know, feel free to let us know what you'd like to see more of and dig into this because there's going to be a lot of pieces, as you can see in this image, um, in the screenshot, there's a lot of parts to it. So we can kind of explore and check things out and show you what, what it's like to do certain things. So let us know in the live chat uh, what you'd like to see as well and what questions you have. And I guess with that, we can um, let's go on over to to I guess we should should we start in the app sheet side or from our uh, spreadsheet? I think you could start, start with, with the spreadsheet. spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. As as, spreadsheet, as often yeah. is the case, yeah. it starts with a spreadsheet. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Like any good uh, mystery novel. So I, if you want to talk through it, or yeah, I can let's, do it as let's well, talk through it a little uh, bit. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So one thing that I did before this, you know, live stream was that I, I have this spreadsheet that has three tabs, and it follows kind of like a classical uh, master detail detail uh, relationship from a data perspective. So basically, it's a it's a set of tasks that belong to a set of projects, and those projects belong to a set of different owners. Um, so when you set it up in a spreadsheet like this, where you can actually refer to the different uh, projects and owners it's, it, with, using a column. So if you notice here, and we, each yeah. task, uh, it actually has a, a project owner. So if you scroll a little bit to the right, I think it's just because it's- Yeah, uh, I just made it a little bigger for folks row. so they could You'll see, see clearly. Yeah. So each task is, is associated with each project. And then you could also climb up yeah. into the projects. So there's a set of projects there. And the same thing, they, they, if you scroll to the right, you'll see that they're associated with a different set of owners. And then on the owners, you have like basically kind of some information about the different owners and such like that. So basically, yeah, that, that's essentially what we'll be starting out with. And then the next thing is we'll just uh, switch over to AppSheet. We're going to build an app off of this yeah. spreadsheet. So feel free, have at it, and uh, I'll butt out. But uh, feel free um, if you yeah, want yeah. to no, uh, give you some keep, key, keep key us, tips. Uh, informed. Yeah, keep us So this is what we were playing with yesterday. So if I want to start a new one, yeah. um, I, I want to show yep. people what it looks like to really go from scratch. So I'm just going to go to AppSheet.com. How's that? And then we'll yep. just start from That'll there. Work. And I hopefully, um, maybe I'm already signed out, but I was thinking I should try you to could, sign up. You can sign it, sign in, or, or if you see where it yeah. says My Apps, right there, just go there. And if that follows through and it still has your... Uh, it does. Well, I'm hoping, I'm, I want to actually okay. sign out so that people can see the, the, the full flow. Yeah, you can do that. So I'm just looking yeah, totally. for a sign out button, which for some reason I am having uh, difficulty Oh, ah, here. <laughs> Why would you ever? Yeah, say, oh, right. there it is. Right. There it is. Go. Perfect. Oh, okay. So, um, if now I go back to the home page, okay. So this is what hopefully people yep. will see when they go to AppSheet.com, and uh, if I good. just click log in, uh, I appreciate that they integrate with so many different sign-in providers. Uh, people yep. can authenticate through all sorts of places. So I guess that means they can also tie it to their documents that are stored in all of these different kind of cloud repositories, which is really nice. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna sign in with our demo account here. 
and so the usual kind of two-click OAuth flow and look at that somebody named Peter from AppSheet is welcoming me this is cool That's right. <laughs> I don't think this was here last time we were, we were just looking at it well, a special welcome we'll a special welcome for the live stream <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah we'll, we'll try to That's make right. a new app and in this case you can also mention what you were looking at where it said yeah. quick start. Uh, I mean, you, you can hit cancel uh -huh. really quickly. I'll, I'll explain what they're seeing. Notice on the left side, you can start from scratch. You can make a brand new app, but those things on the right, mm -hmm. those boxes, those it's actually looking at your uh, various data objects from your account. So that's why it's like, oh, what's this? I already know these. And I think the first time you notice that yeah. it's already is ready to prepare applications. Um, but yeah, for for this demo, let's let's start a new one right. from scratch. Yeah, this this so was this was crazy. Yeah, when I when started. I saw this, I was very yeah. surprised and, and pleased to see that right. uh, it was able to kind of recognize. I guess you you call them data objects, but just like recognize that there's stuff in my drive already that yep. could make uh, you they could stick a front end on and and give me access to it, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, we have our own data, right? We have cool. that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we call this. So that's when you project tracker or whatever. Let's call it something like that. And there's some categories we can choose from. And this is in a, you can pick whatever, but like project management kind of matches sure. it, I've noticed. So. Planning and project management, nice. Like it, yeah. It's really just for- And, and we actually you know. have a copy of, of this sheet over here. So. I'll drop that link into the chat if any you know if, you, if folks are looking to follow along. I don't I want to I don't want to leave people out, so um, you can kind of take that as a view only sheet. So copy it into your drive and you can kind of play along, uh, since you know it can take a little bit of effort to kind of set up one of these little sheets to to play around with. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let's see. We've got to select a file. We got our view only one, and we got um, the other one that we're. So for you, you you definitely don't want the view only one yet. You want the yeah. one that we we yeah. practice with because you need. Right That's right. Access. Yeah, we do need right access. Well, so to definitely right make access, a copy of that sheet. Yeah. Don't just add it to your drive. Yeah, you make your own copy. Right. That's a good key thing. Just yeah. Get stuck. Yeah, I wonder what what would be the behavior if we um hadn't you know if we didn't have if I didn't have edit control. Wow, look at this pop up. These these little helpful sheets. We did not yeah. have this when I first stepped through it. That's funny because like this is technically the second time I've signed Live in. Demo. So they, I guess they, they added some yeah. of this stuff yeah. overnight. Because you used the same account yeah. before, I believe, but then you went through the whole process. But yeah, Apps no can worries. be used on all sorts um, of places and mobile devices and web device. Cool. That's always good to know to have that cross-platform support. We've got our live app preview. This is like the built-in demo for the product. I don't, I don't even, who needs us? Like this is, yeah. this is all. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Peter. basically, um, a functional preview yeah. of your app. Yep, that's great. Um, I mean, this is what yep. I expect, yep. right? From like a no-code environment, I want to be able to preview my stuff. Yep. I want to be able to manipulate the elements. Uh, my data syncs back yep. to my spreadsheet, and so everything to do with the data is in this data tab. And we can change the yep. look of it with UX. Great. We got behavior. Mm -hmm. We can use workflows. Do, do they mean behavior? Mm -hmm. uh, to automate. Uh, yep. Trigger notifications, generate documents, and change data. Fantastic. And then we yeah. can add other. So that's the logical aspect. Yeah. And finally, we there's a whole community. Cool. That's that's good to yep. to note for. Um... And there's uh, office oh, hours yeah? as well that you can sign up for and join the office hours as well. Perhaps. That's AppSheet. amazing. Uh, let's see. App sheet creator community. Cool. Put that in the live chat for folks, yep. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. So, so that's I guess our first tour. What I was really shocked by when we first looked at this, I was just um, blown away by the fact that it already like this isn't just an empty app, right? It, they could have just given me a blank app that was just like just a white screen with nothing on yep. it, but they looked at the sheet. And check this out: all these things, right? Generate metrics, finish report, publish publish report are literally what these are. They're already yeah. there. That's amazing. So you have a live you have live dead edit, full edit access to that data. And then you can it's full yeah. CRUD. So you know create, replace, update, delete, all that stuff, and, and query, things like that, that, that you get out of the box. Um, now because 
you, you've linked this spreadsheet to this app. Anytime you do any updates, you'll actually see the spreadsheet update awesome. once it synchronizes as well. So, so it's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, for, for building this app, one of the things that we can do, you'll notice if you want to take the next step, we can actually add more tables so that we'll actually have tasks uh, and their owner of the projects that yeah. are, are linked to them. And then we can add also the owners yeah, themselves. Because this is, this so is just that, that first that right now, tab. This is just this task tab in our spreadsheet. And I also wanted to exactly. call out the fact that exactly. this data wasn't lost either. If I uh, click into one of these, the date and whether or not it was complete and the ID are all kind of captured here, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is- Yeah, you could like click even like the, uh, the little uh, the pencil uh -huh. the checkbox thing if you wanted to change anything right there. Ah, the like okay. The so I wasn't sure control. if this would cause me to yeah. create a new task, but it actually is an edit for this particular task. Nice. It's an edit function, but you could so, also create so a new task I've already, if you wanted to. But before you so do if that, I've already yeah. published this report, I can, I can change this to yes, click save, yeah. And then now this says yes, but importantly, oh, there's a little one here. Should I click that? Yeah, it's synchronizing. Oh, so it's a lot gone. Of times I didn't click it. It's just, it'll take it okay, it just took a moment. Though. So now yep. if I go back to the table, where is publish report? Publish report, and now the complete is true. Yep. Awesome. Yep. So yeah. So yeah, that's a vi your very first uh, yeah. CRUD app, and it's also mobile right. friendly. So you can even change the yeah, toggle you can between toggle you and the tablet view. And so it's, it yeah. just stretches it out. And then there's also like, if you click the further right button, mm -hmm. the little icon, it actually launches a new window. But that may not show because uh, you have your live stream set up. It yeah, may or may not because, be right here, yeah. uh, but generally it just yeah. stretches everything <laughs> out so, to the full screen. Uh, and there are ways where you can combine different yeah. view types uh, in like a dashboard view. So it's not just meant for like mobile view. It's it's, it's also yeah. for desktop as it's, well. It's freaking magical. Like, so now let, let's add these other tables. So I clicked add table and then this thing popped up yep. and the screen kind of flew around a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't do anything, right? I basically yep. just said, add me this table and it just, just did it without me having to yep. say like, okay, let's say the, the tab is here and link it this way and point it that way and pay attention mm -hmm. to this. And there's just no configuration, which is shocking. Um, but it has landed me in this yep. kind of expanded view here. And I guess. Now, one thing, one mm -hmm. thing I can point out there that to toggle the expansion of that, you can just click on that gray area and it will collapse or ah, open it up so again. So this gray area at the um, top here. And then we, yeah. Yeah, it's, so that, it's, uh, that makes it's it clickable, small. basically. So now you have two tab, two uh, data okay. objects. Now you notice, see how it says add a table yeah. for owner? Go ahead and click on that, and let's create All that right. one and as it well. Does the same thing, it Boom. pops it open, it thinks for a little bit, mm -hmm. does its magic, and re kind of synchronizes the app, and now we have project, exactly. task, and owner here now, down below. If you go on owner, so if you click on the owner on the mm -hmm. bottom right. This one here. So that queries, yep, that queries all of the owners, and then you can just drill down on any one of mm -hmm. those people. So just pick pick one of them. Like you can pick mine, my little star, whichever. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> and then you'll notice there's related projects that Amazing. that person owns, and you can drill down so on those projects. On project. And depending on the data, it will actually have like the tasks at the bottom. So these are tasks that that project uh, has mm -hmm. under it, and then the project owner is obviously where we started from. So. In essence, essentially, that relation all got preserved and it got essentially put into this application yeah. for free. Um, so it follows the relations. I can also show you on the data table, the columns, and how that actually works in AppSheet, where it automatically sets up mm -hmm. a reference uh, between the two tables, um, which- uh, Yeah, you let's, see, let's that, see that. So you're saying you in, the, okay. in the web UI here, we can trace that back? Yep. So pop open the tasks uh, table. So mm -hmm. collapse the owner and just pop open right, the task so really here. quickly. And then uh, see where it says view columns uh, at this the top? Button here. That little button there, yep. So that's typically the UI that you're gonna be working with. So once you click on that, that's gonna show you the columns that are now mapped to the okay. spreadsheet and, or essentially your, your data table spreadsheet. And I noticed, I and noticed noted, that it also kicked us over okay. kind of there are these four tabs up here and this is the columns tab, okay. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now notice um, at the bottom where it says project and then it has yeah. ref mm -hmm. as the type. That's what's the relationship between the tasks and its gotcha. parent projects. Now, if you collapse task and then do the same thing for project, uh -huh. uh, pop that open, 
you'll see not only do you have a ref to the owner, but you'll now have a related tasks. And if you scroll to the right, you'll see essentially Ooh. this little expression that says, okay, for this project, it has these related tasks. And the same thing if you were to also, uh, oh, don't change that, well, anyway. Um, but basically, uh, you can kind of see how the plumbing works. And, and this is auto-generated. Uh -huh. Um, you you can of course manually connect data tables, just by kind of following this yeah. uh, this approach where you set up this ref type for the actual column and you point it to the other table, uh, which could be a, you know another uh, tab in a spreadsheet or another entire okay. spreadsheet. And same thing for and I don't think I stressed it clearly. It's like we're dealing with a spreadsheet right now, but this could also be talking to a SQL database in the cloud. So Cloud SQL is like another mm -hmm. example that we typically can, can play with and show the exact same type of relationships. Sure. And these relationships can also read the foreign key relationships between database tables. So then you'll, you'll see essentially the same behavior here in AppSheet and without really having to do anything other than point the AppSheet product to the, the database uh, in that point and then pick what tables you want it to, to pull into an Outrageous. application. And so if I were to guess, it seems that she was able to correctly kind of infer the relationships between these tabs yeah. purely because of the fact, the coincidence, so to speak, that we named these columns with names that match the names of these uh, tabs down below. So like we called this column project. Well, and so it knew that I'm going to look over here. I would call it a coincidence. I actually set that up specifically so you get that auto generation fee from it. But in, in in general, if you want to set up your data such that you're mm -hmm. able to do that, it's pretty easy to, to just have it do it out of the box. If you don't have it set up like this, you can manually set, oh, yeah. let's create a column that has the ref type and then point it to the other table, and that's basically it, so, so you're, you're good. Now, how does this one, like let's take this example, right, where it is different. Um, this is the project table, and it needs to point to owner. Mm -hmm. And so, as we saw in the in the actual spreadsheet, owner is a is a column here, and it needs to refer to the mm -hmm. owner tab. So, if we had called yep. the to the column something else, let's say we called it like owner ID or something like that, and and maybe actually it's smart mm -hmm. enough that it knows mm -hmm. when you say ID to just like look also for the word owner. But let's just say for the sake mm -hmm. of argument, we named it something else, and then we say ref. How does it know what to reference? Because there's nothing else in this row that talks well, about like a tab of a spreadsheet. It it, it, it boils down to the table yeah. name um, or okay. the tab name, and, and that's what it's going off of. And so, okay. so it does it, have to match. Uh, I don't believe it would work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that that's good to know for folks that like it's it's not only mm -hmm. is it not coincidence, mm -hmm. but that it's kind of required, right? That this column. Yeah. And, and you know you can always experiment with yeah. these things just to kind of mm -hmm. you know play with it uh, to see the behavior. Uh, and you'll see in the documentation you can understand how app sheet references work. And typically they say you just make sure you select the type as ref and point it to a table of the mm -hmm. same name, and then it should uh, gotcha. refer to that. Um, and then you'll get that uh, awesome kind of built-in. Yeah, behavior it's an you, so. amazing behavior. Yeah. And once you're like aware of it, like I'm sure people will just definitely name it that way and make it match because like why wouldn't you mm -hmm. right like yeah mm -hmm. that's that's cool I'm, i appreciate us being so, able to get into the plumbing so now that you've created the app there are a few more things that we can do to make mm -hmm. it a little bit more user friendly uh and i'm going to walk you through this but real quickly in order to make the app functional where it's like if i insert a new task i have this id column but i don't, I don't want the id i don't want to have to type in a new id per task or per project or per owner. I want it to be auto-generated. Yeah. And so to do that, we're going to go back to the tables um, on the left there, and we're just going to add a little bit of like you know functionality to okay. auto-generate it. So go to the task, click on the view column. View column, yeah, we're back to view columns, OK. Yeah, the columns yeah. tab or whatever. And then if you s click on the ID checkbox oh, on yeah. the left, this little that pencil opens here. Up into like a, a property. All right, so yep. we're going to edit this. You pop that open, and then now we can control the behavior of this particular okay. column. So first off, you don't need to show that, right? So there's no value. So let's turn that off. Great. And also change the type to be a text because we're going to generate an alphanumeric uh, code for the new IDs that get generated. And then now go down to auto compute. If you scroll down. Auto a bit. compute. Great. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, does that look? Yeah, that's initial value is the one we're going to update. 
And this is where you add a little bit of code. It's basically unique ID, all one word, with this some print. Yeah. Code, so we're like kind of calling this function. We're we're calling it the unique ID function. Yeah. Yeah. And you see it validated. It's like okay, I know what you mean. And then you're good to go. You can hit and save. And if folks wanted to find um, their own like yeah. other functions, it looks like there's a number of tips and tricks in here, which is very extensive. Yeah. This is very helpful. Exactly. Cause like you can see all the examples and then you can click insert and it will just give <laughs> you that expression right there. So this is what's known as the expression assistant and it comes in handy. You know, if you don't, don't quite, uh, know the syntax or whatever, yeah. it just gives mm -hmm. you all those things and you can live. Here, here's our, right our unique ID value. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we just did the default, just bang out something brand new. Um, Let's see, was there anything else we wanted to do for this one? No, I think that was it. We just want to make sure mm -hmm. we don't show it. Um, we changed it to type text, and then um, we're good to go right. with that one. Oh, the other yeah. thing we can do, we can set the default value for the, uh, this is new, I didn't do it with you last time. You can set a default value for the um, the, the project status. So you don't do it on this column, actually. We're okay. going to do it on the other column. So ID, so we're click good to done go. Here, so go ahead and click done. Which is, is a little bit yeah. hidden. Uh... And then hit save. Whenever you see that save button on the top Correct. right, it's good to hit save. Just say, that way you're you're mm -hmm. syncing everything. Um, yeah. So this right blue blue so save. save. And what's interesting is yep. it looks like once I click save, it grays out. And so we we just need to keep an eye up yep. there. That means you're you're synchronized yeah. entirely. All right. So now let's make it so the task will not show up as empty, but it will actually say uh, complete no. Hmm. So pop open the yeah, complete Yeah, it'd be nice so to have that, that little have a editor. default value. That's great. Yeah, and then, you know, just like what we did before, what was the yeah. auto-compute? Right, Initial you value. set it to no. Now, you'll notice here in the expression assistance where it says false, it's like the second yeah. row. Click okay, let's insert. see what it does. Oh, it just puts it in. And Great. it validates, it's fine. So yeah, now you and hit it's save. important to note there that it's a lowercase f in false, which depending on your language, I think it's, I think it's yeah, friendly. depending on the language yeah, you're familiar with, or may or may yeah. not, you know. Yeah. Be. Yeah. So you'll see in the spreadsheet, it's up, uppercase mm -hmm. anyway uh, when it finally oh, that's sends true. it off. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, but you can click done yeah. and save. Um, All right, let's, let's click done. And yeah, the save button's popped so up again. Make sure you get everything synchronized. And before mm -hmm. we get too far, why don't we go ahead and update the ID columns for projects yeah. and owners in the same manner? Yeah, let's do that. So pop that open, pop open yep. the ID, and I'll, I'll just yeah, let you do it. Yeah, we got a good workflow going. So go by memory. Uh -huh. Yep. So yeah, meanwhile, you know, if, if there's other um, things that would be worth kind of talking about in terms of uh, either the things I'm encountering here or kind of what our next steps might look like or in terms of the design. Hit save. Oh, right, hit save. Hit save. Between also, each one. Kind of, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I think it's best, you know, in my experience, it's always good to kind of just make sure. Yeah, it reminds good. me of like uh, the, the good old days before we had everything kind of sync to the web and you'd just be working in like a local document, right? And the the refrain of save early and save often so your homework doesn't get lost <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right i think we all yes. know that one the computer ate my homework so with a, with, because it yeah. ran out of memory and crashed okay and so i think we got yeah. all three now right okay so the cool thing that you could do right now like if you we can clean up the UI a bit sure. on the right. Now, see at the bottom, there's a the little menu where we have yeah. calendar one. We've got another cash. calendar here. Yeah. First off, calendar one, we don't yeah, need Yeah, where did it, that actually. come from? So it might be a bug. I, we could delete that, to be honest. So to Look do that, this. if you go over to the left navigator, yeah, it does That's work. Cool, it's yeah. basically a copy. <laughs> uh, so on the left side where you see it says UX, yeah, we could, yeah it's a totally That's functional great. calendar. It's just grabbing the data. Now, you see that yeah. calendar one? Just click on that. And click delete. delete. Or am I sure? Are we sure? <laughs> yeah. And notice it auto updated uh, the, mm -hmm. the preview. There's no more calendar one. Uh, there is a save oh, button. It's up come here. Back. So go ahead and click that. Yep. Just to make sure we're. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other thing that this particular uh, app, I like to put the owner on the far left. 
Uh, and so to do that, you could pop open the owner yeah. view. So the, if you click that and then pop open owner. Yeah, and I'm really getting over, into this, the groove of using pop. kind of this gray bar to toggle kind of whether things are open or closed. So Right, yeah. Yeah, once you yeah, get used to it, it's, it's, it may not be super apparent yeah. initially. Now, um, what we have right there where it says position, if you look down yeah. just a little bit, and it has these little leftmost left, click on the leftmost Yeah, we'll put the owners there. to Instead the of far right left. Mode, click leftmost, and it, now the owner yeah. is far left, and that also and I see the save has come directly. back. <laughs> you did it. Oh, and you can do Command yeah, S. Yeah, oh, good old yeah, Command S. Command S. No, there you go. Let's save yourself some, some uh, see, I guess. So, so now we're getting the app that's looking a little bit more mm -hmm. usable. I think at this point, if you wanted to drill down on any one of those uh, yeah. owners, we could add a task uh, to Great. for that owner. Oh, the other part is like I forget if we added a, a oh, record for yet. you. Uh, you could also add yourself as an owner. Um, either way, um, you can you can basically uh -oh. start to operate with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the app. Yeah, just click on owner and it'll. All right, let's let's order. try adding me. So if you wanted to. All right. And notice the ID doesn't even show. So we're just going to like assume yeah. it's being saved automatically. And then, yeah, you can upload your photo. Right. Put a little picture here. That's cool that we have that functionality. Like, um, you know, just to make it clear for viewers what's happening here, we haven't done anything to make that happen, right? There was no magic in this spreadsheet tab that said, like, enable local upload of photos or any sort of thing. It's safe. Um, it's just a functionality yep. that's just built in, which is remarkable. And now it just works because mm -hmm. a lot of these things, I think it's easy to take for granted as far as just like, oh yeah, this is how an app should work. But like building this stuff takes time and energy and effort. And mm -hmm. you have to think about all these things. And the fact that this just works is just absolutely mind blowing because between this and like <laughs> all the, you know, actual the backing data but then of course you have app scripts that you can use to manipulate that data like it, the possibilities start really getting intense after after you, you know you start realizing what what worlds of possibilities have opened up and we haven't even looked at all these other view types that they have oh yeah, yeah. those so yeah we can we can go we can get into that more mm -hmm. a little bit later but one thing that you were just yeah. about to do uh if you go back to that spreadsheet uh, I noticed you were looking for your uh, new yeah. row. It hadn't appeared because the app was syncing. And then once it synchronizes, you'll see that. Uh, and so you have your info there. And also you'll see that there's this mm -hmm. on the photo. It's not a live photo. It's actually, uh, that's actually a Google Drive folder for your account. So it's actually storing them locally. And you can control how it gets you know, shared with uh, app, other app users. But basically the default is just put it into a drive. Um, you can do either yeah. way. You can also have it like, uh, live URLs for photos or whatever. Um, you can even do some pretty cool things where you have a photo, take, snap, take a snapshot, things like that. Um, that gets into the more uh, pretty cool and intricate behaviors. But for now, uh, this is fine. This will this will work just fine Very for cool. you now. Um, and then also the auto-generated yeah, ID. Um, These hex codes. Yeah. So you can even use the app to generate a new project or just like assign a project. Actually, this is one we can do. Go to the Projects tab, click on Projects uh, on the bottom. And then if you want to take ownership of any one of those projects, um, like launch killer new app. <laughs> I'll, whatever, I'll, I'll plan the offsite. Whatever, I'll plan really the matter. offsite because that will yeah. be a good time. You can change the owner by clicking yeah, the edit little, uh, little icon right there. Here. Yeah. And so then oh, if you scroll down, a, the owner is currently menu. Ari, and then you should be able to Brilliant. see yourself Look at there. That. Um, like this sort of stuff. You like now it, you're the this owner. takes work to, to code up. Like this is not like trivial things, you know? Yeah, trust me. Yeah, we've, we've I've both been there. Been there. So, so, <laughs> so this is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like mm -hmm. the, this team is, uh, I've got to plan an offsite for late November, try not to conflict with holidays exactly. and who knows what travel. So will now you like can uh, add a task. Yeah. Like if you go back to owner, uh, go back to owner and you'll yep. see all the owners just to, from the top and then drill down and you'll see that uh, if you click on yourself, so let's see there, click on your, and then now yeah. scroll down, there you have offsite planning. And then that's right. the project, right? So go ahead and click on it. You'll drill down into the tasks. So um, are you on the tasks page? Just make sure you drill down onto the task uh, part of it. Um, let's see, related tasks. So go to offsite right. planning Sorry. and then tasks. All right, I got yep. UX yep. analysis. 
It's very well, important for team offsites. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's, it's all wacky demo stuff. Uh, click on add. So we're going to create a new task for you. Okay. So click add. And then notice how complete end is already Perfect. blanked out. Yeah. It's already selected. That's because we added that initial default mm -hmm. of false. So it's it's basically. And I see they there. also have a default value for the date your... to be just today, which is nice too. That's right. It just yeah. picked today. But we can set that as well. We, we could say initial value to be some future date, like two weeks in the, in, in the future, something like that. Um, and then, yeah, once you get your detail set nice. up there. Maybe I'll give myself a date. Um, give me a couple of weeks to figure this one out. Making fires is, yeah. you know, not a, not a trivial task. Next up is reinventing the wheel. That's right. That's a, we've got a committee that's been assigned that's to right. work on that. It's going to take us a couple of years. So. What is the best shape for a wheel? Unclear. Yeah. <laughs> Going to iterative approach. We're going to start yeah. uh, doing some modeling, get some uh, UX studies. You know, have some people with squares and triangles and try to figure out. Them. <laughs> but we did it. digress. Check your spreadsheet now. So you should see your new data. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You can view oh, it in the, in the it would be wider. Yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah go over to the spreadsheet here. We, I guess we added a new task. So I'll go to task, mm -hmm. and here it is. Research how to there make campfires. It's um, not complete, and it's due uh, in a couple weeks. Yeah. The, no surprises. Everything's working. The plumbing basically yeah. works uh, as expected. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing, other two other mm -hmm. things we can do before wrapping up. Now that you have a functioning app, you could make it such that when you go to that owners tab mm -hmm. on the bottom, you want to might you might want to make it so that you filter out all the other owners. You just want to see your own okay. projects, right? And so an easy way to do this is to create a a, a slice of data. Essentially, it's a filter or a right. query. And uh, we can walk through that in like two steps, basically, if you want to Great. do that, um, two or three steps. So to do that, click on the data uh, tab uh -huh. on the left in the navigator, right? And so see where it says slices on the top? Oh, up top, yes. So we, we were so in tables, tab, we were in uh, columns. Now we're going to check out columns, slices. Slices. Now, slices is basically how you can create query or filter yeah. conditions that, that you can select a subset mm -hmm. of your data. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a new query or a filter condition that only selects the owners that are associated with your awesome. email address. So only yeah. your project. And okay. before we so do that, add a new Christian, slice by clicking the I, I also wanted to call attention mm -hmm. to the fact that these two, like th that in general, a lot of these pages have these kind of recommendations or just like quick add things, yep. which are, you know, surprisingly yep. um, relevant and accurate. Like this is add a slice yep. of task for recent updates of the date column. Like it knows that dates, you yep. probably want recent things and, and you can then see your recent task, yep. which is extremely reasonable for like a feature request. And then this one, you can have slices right. for if the complete is true or false, which is another amazing toggle. Right. So mm -hmm. really crazy. Yeah, no, it's very good. And that's the cool thing about this. You can always just experiment and see what mm -hmm. it suggests and, and then play with it, see how it works yeah. for you. Um, so you mm -hmm. got your new slice. Um, let's call it owner slice. So let's see where it says new slice is the name. Just call it owner slice. Nice. Right. And then the table, the source table is not going to be task. It's going to be, yep. you can pop it open. Yep. And it says owner. Right. And then we need to just add the filter condition. Right. So pop that open. And this is where you want to actually put in, mm -hmm. I can read it to you, but if you have your, it's basically in a bracket, you can say yeah. email. And that's with brackets around it equals, and then there's a term user email exactly, and you close open and close the the quotes or gotcha. the, the parentheses there, and that's basically it. It'll validate, and then that will apply that filter condition. So yeah, I'm also just browsing. Yeah, I think we looked it up earlier. Any, right? yeah. Anything that is uh, similar? I think the most similar one we have is things like this one, like location equals text value or owner name. Yeah, I, th I think it's in there. I think oh, okay. you found it earlier, but uh, you're good to go at this point. You can, save that. you can um, hit save, and then also hit the save, yeah, the, the main save, save button as well. the big blue save. Yeah. Now, in order for it to show up in the UI, you will have to do an update to the UX, the, the actual view. Oh, interesting. So okay, that, UX, that's uh, something that perhaps would have, you know, been over easily easy to overlook. Yeah, it's like now you've set up mm -hmm. the data, but now you're going to go back to your UI. So on the left navigator, mm -hmm. click UX, and then click on Owner, the little uh, box for owner, pop that open. And right at the top, you'll see for this data, 
Mm-hmm. See that little drop down? Which table or slice uh, to on display? The right. So we we'll click that. Right. So and you look want at to that. Change that to owner. So this is new. Yeah. This is after we made that extra slice. Now yep. we have this it, new option. Exactly. Just. And look at that. It's changed. And wow. voila. You've now applied that filter by default. Gotcha. And so click oh, save. Got to click save. Uh, <laughs> I, or command shift or command uh, yes. S, I believe. And then you're good to go. So let's do one uh-huh. more addition to our cool app. Uh, because the projects have some financial yeah. data, it makes sense to have maybe sure. a chart yeah. so we can show all the different projects' data. And so to do that, let's yeah, go ahead and the numbers. UX. Yeah. Um, let's add a new. Yeah, we have mm-hmm. budgetary info. So see where it says yeah. add new view. And there's even the some UX suggestions thing. too, which again is really cool. Yep. All right, yep. we're making a new view. So as you, it's going to be a new view. Call it just budget. And for the data, you want it to be the projects uh-huh. table. And we don't need a new slice or because anything. Because we know we have one. some budget data. Uh, no, don't worry about any okay. slice or anything for now. Um, and then select chart uh-huh, as the yes. view type. And then now we want to change the chart type. Instead of a histogram, let's make it a pie chart. Yep. Yeah. And then scroll down, you'll see what columns. So go ahead and click uh, on plus. Do we want it, it on the right options. positionally? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah let's put what it on does the right menu sure. mean? It was on menu before, and it caused it to disappear. Uh, so that will then pop up into the menu on oh. the top left. So that's oh, cool. Look here. You can even have things um, overflow, yeah. right? Because I was thinking about how, like, you know, what if you wanted yeah. more than just like four or five things? You can you can have exactly. a very long yeah. list. That's great. So yeah, it's good that you pointed that out. So so now it's flipped over to the right side. Now let's change the icon. So it's not just those little boring lines, but we want it to be more graphically kind of matching a, a yeah. chart, right? So let's see if you remember how to do this. Yeah, since where we walked through I, yesterday. should we save first to get this to show something? Oh, well, I'll go ahead and hit save. Yeah, hit save the, for sure. Because I, I don't think for it's sure. pulling the data yet. And did you add the column? Oh, That's I don't think we did. Let's add the column. Um, <laughs> no data. Yeah. So we got to so add a column. Pop that. Exactly. And we want it to be yep. so like the budget, the right column. not the row number, of course. Exactly. Exactly. So now we have these. There you go. Now, um, what we were trying to do, you're talking about this icon for budget instead of just having a bunch of lines, we could have something more interesting. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I jumped ahead, it, but yeah, you uh, want to ah, change just, I'm just going to dig through yeah. the menus. That's, that's yeah. usually my approach is expand everything and, and yep. dig <laughs> into things mm-hmm. as much as you can. Yep. So you got a lot of cool things here, and it's a, it looks like a short list, but you can. it looks like this search might give us a lot of cool search. options. Um, exactly. So maybe maybe we and do whatever you want. Um, you know, a reasonable one like like this one, and now we have it here. Like it's just the UI just updates so so easily. Um, but um, for yep. for fun, I think I'll actually keep this one. <laughs> typically, hit save. It's yeah. a, it's a pie. Get a little pie. It's yeah. the budget for it's the pie yeah. budget. How much um, how much pie can we buy for the team during that team offsite? That's the whole purpose exactly. of this app is uh, to you know make sure you have funds for. Uh, yeah. Pies. Um, let's see. What was else? What other thing um, that's fun to do? We mm-hmm. got the chart. We got the slice. Um, oh, the one thing that you can do that and you don't even have to do anything. You oh, get it for free. For free. On the mm-hmm. menu, on the on the menu in the actual mm-hmm. UI, if you want to switch the UI to be a bit larger, uh, actually switch the preview to the tab, the middle one. Yeah, the, the tablet. Icon, yeah. That one. Yeah, exactly. Great. The tablet. Now click on the the menu, uh, the little uh, menu icon yeah, the... in the top left. You'll see where it says assistant. Oh, cool. Now, if you click on that, that will allow you to talk what? to your app. And it'll ask you to allow you to, to just do verbal commands to the app. Uh, so that if you click on that, it's going to ask you, is it OK to use your microphone? It has not asked me that and, uh, yet. Maybe I have to click yeah. on the mic. So now click on the little microphone. View a gallery of, OK, yeah. so okay, now it's going to prompt me. So click I say allow. Yep, uh-huh. got it. allow. And then, as it's recording, you can say, "Show me my, show me all tasks ordered by date." Something show like that. Show me all tasks ordered by date. I don't, is the text supposed to show up here as I talk? Uh, it will. Oh, click save just to make sure everything's all, right. all synchronized yeah, the, as well. Yeah, the big blue save. Got to watch right. out for that. All right. Yeah, it's just like it's like built in. Just yeah. Like all right. Here. All right. So now, 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 cool. I think we're. What all are we? What are we saying again? Up. Remind me. Like, for cut. Oh, so just to rehearse before you click on it, show me all the tasks ordered okay. by date. That usually works. 
or show me all of my tasks or show me all the tasks right. ordered by date. I think that will work. Show me all of the tasks ordered by date. What? There you go. So, yeah. Pretty cool. And you, you can yeah. play with it. Like, you know, it's just basically natural uh -huh. language processing. Um, so, so this is where it's like AppSheet already is plugging into some of the ML AI technologies yeah. that Google has. Um, there's some other fun stuff. We can do it in a later demo, but it's like you can set it up to do machine learning on image uh -huh. analysis, such it that generates uh, tags for you. it will like a badge reader. There's like a badge oh. reader example that will you can like train it to have some badge reader uh, capabilities, and it will automatically start to to deduce that. Because um, like I don't know if you remember, I did a demo using like app script to use the vision right. API directly and you have to get yeah, into JSON get and, the key and, and, and uh, form your request. Yeah, that's that stuff. This one, you just have it on it just works. demand basically. And you can, you can set it up to, to use it Amazing. in whatever fashion you yeah. want. Um, um, yeah, yeah. And Wanda on uh, yeah, the live stream think... says this looks so oh. cool. They definitely agree with that Wanda. Just for fun. It, as we start to wrap up, if you want to change the oh, look yeah. and feel, you can actually go through and let's see if you All can right. figure it out. Let's let's uh -huh. let's see if we can explore around and, and folks on the live chat feel free to help help me out a little bit here. I also want to ask one more question yeah. on the on the assistant because this is so freaking amazing. Um, yeah. Show me all tasks that are not complete. Oh my word! It, it can it understood <laughs> that like the completed column is is what we care about. That's absolutely yeah. remarkable. And you can see mm -hmm. what's it's computing down here. It looks like it says view a table of task rows where complete equals false. Like it, it, it did it correctly. It knew what it was talking about. That's just right. it's mind blowing. I mean, yeah. Integrating the assistant is like, uh, you know, you, you, yeah. you farm that out to your like development team and then you check back in in two weeks and it's like, how's that going for you? And it's just like, here, have it for free. Um, all right. Yep. But we wanted to change the it's appearance. Done. So I'm going to guess it's in the UX menu somewhere. And when you say behavior, all right, let's just look around here. We got brand. Oh, wow. Ah, okay, customize the look and feel of your app. So let's let's go back to the, like the top level view, something like this so we can see it. Primary color is medium blue. Okay, so that's controlling all these blue buttons. So if we made it like green yeah. or orange, like that skin directly, we got a dark theme and a light theme. Oh, it's a real Halloween feel to it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you could, exactly. could make it, uh, Red, red, and um, app logo. We got a couple of app logo choices here, and we can, of course, upload our own thing. So maybe for project tracking, um, I don't know, something like this. Whatever. A launch Whatever image. Both. Oh, you can choose a custom launch image too. Yeah, like it's like the static image when you launch yeah. thing. That's great. And then we can have a background. So hit Command S by the oh, way. Oh yeah. Below. Where the, where does this background image show up? Oh, fun. Nice. All right, all right. So I'm giving it kind of like a, I don't know about this red. I might need to change this to a, to a different shade. Let's try something. And then we got headers and footers. What is this? Oh, up here. It shows it in the, all right, that, that's nice. I, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's good to have that. That looks yeah. good. Show logo in the header. The, the cool thing about it is like you can literally trial and error your way through it and start to work yourself yeah because the there's there's no more than just yeah because there's yeah. no like a cost really to like playing around with it it's yeah. not like oh oh this is nice i like this look um if you if you yeah. you know if i hit turn this on it's like oh yeah i want that back okay it's back and it's just like and and so the the cost yeah. of it, like experimentation is so low yep Nice. So yeah, you, you pretty much got now one question that uh, we have received in the past is like, can you add your own CSS? Um, short answer is no. Um, so you, but you know, there's always up room for discussion down the road. But uh, um, yeah, the, 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 I know like a lot of folks that have like their existing look and feel things like that. Um, but yeah, at least for right now, um, you, you can use this pretty flexible uh, branding UI kind of tweaks, um, and it's kind of material uh, uh -huh. like. So if you know Google Material, you're already kind of getting that, yeah. that similar look and feel. Um, obviously, as AppSheet, the project itself integrates further into Google's nice. overall great. product yeah. suite, uh, both inclusive of, of Google mm -hmm. Cloud and G Suite. You'll see some of these changes over time to to make it so you can plug in the things. Um, on that note, actually, there's um, 
we didn't really get into it, and, and probably we can do this mm -hmm. another time. There's the notion of web hooks or the notion of being able to reach out to other services and do some sort of like an HTTP RESTful command uh, using web hooks. So that's an actual functionality that you can do. I've actually done experiments where I go and, and reach out and touch other services and, and change something or make a call. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do nice. that kind of stuff. Is that in the behavior um, menu? Just, uh, so if you look under, I could um, imagine hacking it together say, with workflow, actions. Yeah, so actions and workflows, and so it, it, that's where you can create a workflow rule. So click on that. I don't yeah, get we can just kind of point people Basically, in the, the right idea direction. that when you when you have a certain uh, thing, you want to do a certain thing. Oh, it's and almost then, so like if this, then that. It's like when this happens, if exactly, this, yeah. Exactly. So when this happens, yep. so like let's say a task changes, and then. Yeah if let's say oh let's say if the task is uh complete so what would that be like complete equals true if i were to guess yeah that sounds reasonable i'm just making this up as i go <laughs> yeah make sure the value of finishes. column complete yeah. is equal to true yeah pretty much i mean and that's for tasks yeah, yeah. right yeah and then yeah, yeah and we can always it's easy to peek over at our database because it's just live it's great so if that is true, but, but you need to have yeah, it do, do this. So this is where you can oh, like, snap. okay, you can shoot an email, SMS, change. Yeah, you could like, hook. you could send a text. Um, that was the thing yeah. that I was mentioning, but yeah, you can do other things That's as well. Notify to send notifications to email. Wait, what's the difference between notify and email then? Because notify sends people notifications to these email addresses and email sends emails to these email addresses. That's a good question. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> have funny. To, have to examine you can that a change bit more. the data. Yeah. You can say when you do that, then do this too. So like when you complete a task, maybe you change something, some other thing gets updated. Yeah, that's you could actually trigger yeah. something else, another data change, which then could that's also have right. another workflow that's right. associated with a data change. Change so reaction. You can string these together. Yeah. What if yeah, you made the exactly. change to uh, change completed back to false? <laughs> the infinite loop. <laughs> yeah, that would triples. not be good. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's when everything, yeah, yeah. Uh, hit save, by the way, just for, yeah. for the heck of it. Um, um, oh, the other thing is like, if you want to get ready to deploy, see where it says uh, big red. Oh deploy. yeah, let's let's show people how, just, how to that get really that quickly. through just to be complete. So, so click on that right there, and then you'll see, okay, there's a deployment check. A lot of these are kind of like just, oh, okay, do you have any kind of you know description, things like that, no big deal. Um, but then you're just like, no, let's go ahead and go with everything uh -huh. that I want. I got an um, error though. Is don't worry it, about the error. I think that's just, okay. that's just your oh. Gmail account. Uh, you can still, I think you okay. can still proceed. Move um, app to deployed state yeah. despite errors. Aha. Try it and yeah, see how it works. And then you have the ability to mm -hmm. share an app, which is not exactly like deploying, but actually you're opening up access to the app. Um, okay, so now you're deployed. Uh, so how then you can I, uh, white label if you know I about how not. that works, the, the like provisions so that you can you walk through that kind of stuff. Now, getting not, depending on the, what version you are, there are some kind of granularity uh -huh. of like how, like what kind of features you'll see. Uh, I, I do know, like we, I mentioned, like connecting to a SQL database, that's not like your free, free version. You actually yeah, need to have okay. like the upgraded version, um, which you can walk through. Where do you get um, the app? Yeah, at the end of that little slide deck that I yeah. shared. Um, there are some links that you can share with everyone. We okay. can get them in a second, but basically, yeah, you can see like uh, uh, probably the main thing is like uh, help.app sheet or support. And there's another pricing one as well, because like a lot of times people are asking about the pricing. Um, and, and just a little bit of a disclaimer, I've been a little bit more on the technology side. Uh, I, the pricing stuff is, is you know working itself out such that we can have like a nice seamless uh, pricing experience across Google okay. and across the product sets. But yeah, in general, that that's a fairly uh, common uh, thing that, that folks are asking for. Um, now, another question is like if you know me from for any mm -hmm. number of years, I've been associated with a product yeah. called AppMaker. So AppMaker uh, kind of similar to AppSheet, but it's also more code centric. So if you know app script, you write code, that's kind of like where it fits in. It actually, uh, in that broad like diagram yeah. I showed, it's a little bit closer to like the, the core programming. So app okay. script so is a little bit further to the, the left. Page. Yeah, AppMaker would allow you to 
design your UI, custom, you know, fit. And, and that's essentially was its forte. It's like you could drag and drop widgets and then plug them into back end app mm. code and have it go against the data model. Um, but um, if you did any custom behavior, you would have to write your own right. app script code. Uh, whereas the, a main contrast with AppSheet is AppSheet is no code. Uh, and that's really like one thing I, I can't stress strong enough. It's like, uh, regardless of the merits of low code versus no code, I won't even touch on that, but AppSheet itself as a product is very uh, strongly committed to the yeah, no code approach. That. And which I think makes sense because the target audience is really anyone to the right side of that graph. So, you know, if you have data and you want to manipulate it, but manipulate it in a more mm -hmm. user-friendly way, uh, then you're good to go nice. with AppSheet. As long as you can kind of walk through the usage that yeah. I walked you through today, which is, you know, just a, you know, literally just within an hour, you're already pretty adept at, at building this. Thanks. Stuff. So, um, yeah. so again, we're still scratching the uh -huh. surface, obviously, but I think at least for now, you kind of have an idea of like, okay, how to, to start typically with a spreadsheet, how to generate a UI, how to, how to like also work with relational data, how to do some things like automatically setting some values. Um, a little bit on the, the customization of the UI, moving things over so they appear correctly. Uh, we created that budget uh, mm -hmm. pie chart pretty easily. We showed the, uh, the slice, uh, how to set up like an owner-based slice. You know, so that's typically what, what you'd want to do. Things like that. Uh, these are like typically the first steps you'd want to do with a gotcha. with app sheet. But already, it's it's a pretty powerful solution that you managed to, you know assemble without you know too much uh, effort so, really. so so chris oh, yeah. the the big question and and rohan in the live chat brings it up and uh, is how do others actually access this app that we've built like we've deployed it but like where is it so go to mm -hmm. deployment again go to like so see where the da, 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 da. you can deploy it and you can specify who can access it right so you can add named users or you can also specify um, within Where your organization, is that? like in um, your domain. Um, I got to pull it up oh, here on okay, my side sure. as well just to remind Yeah, because like I see this white label thing, easy. right? And I can say yes, but it says white label right. action. See where it says click on click on share okay, app. Okay, so share app. I, I wasn't sure if share right app page. was going to share access to the editor. Yeah. So it's under share app. There you go. That's so the can one. add I entire yeah. domain. What is this referring to? So... For example, if you're using, like in my case, I have like a my yeah. own G Suite domain, uh, but it really depends. Oh, you on can share an app with an entire domain. Domains. Cool. Yeah. And again, this is just for access, so turn not on, to edit the app itself. Okay. Right. I think so. <laughs> I, I got to make sure I like get that straight. But anyway, um, yeah, for for this stuff, kind of just to get an experiment, you don't really have to worry about this just yet. But if you're just trying it out, and then later on as you get through it, you can start to kind of get into the the details. But yeah, typically you oh, share I see. And here, there's people an option. in your domain, you can, you can add access, co add co-authors, so etc. So if I leave that, so off, all the all the typical. So stuff if I leave this expect. off, yeah. this invite will just invite them to access the app itself. Yes, that okay. sounds correct. And to be honest, I, that's one area that I still haven't played with too much. I've been focusing more like the, the app creation gotcha. parts, but yeah, feel free yeah. to have that. So it. if I add users and, and send an invite. And just tell it you're not a robot, yeah. you should be okay. So now I've, I've sent this thing. And also the authentication provider, in that sense, you're already mm -hmm. using Google because you signed in with your Gmail, yeah. things like that. Uh, but you can also select whether And what I'm using. seeing here, I'm gonna collapse these menus so folks can see this. There's this invite and I can choose whether they can use the app can view the definition. Okay, so that's like view only mode in the editor here, um, which is an interesting yeah, idea right. of just like giving people insight into what's happening behind the scenes, but not letting them change it. And then you, of course you can edit. And then mm -hmm. you have this role user admin, and then you have app version, default, latest, or stable. Yep. Okay, so yeah, I think I saw something in the deployed menu here about versions and you can kind of control versions, the history. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I stable. app maker had the same thing. You go through, it keeps yeah. track. Of oh, your it's cool. You can make and, the current and, version the yeah. new stable version. Show all users the latest yeah. version. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So this is kind of what, what we made, right? This is the little. Yeah, so that's like the full screen view of the app, basically. Very cool. Well, hopefully that. Um, it was a, a useful overview for folks. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to hit up Christian at um, CSC Shulk on Twitter. 
uh, or myself. Yeah. I'll, I'll... Now, now I got to be. Uh, I got to stay with my, my Twitter <laughs> stream. I've been neglecting it for a while, but yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. keep up on that. But, yeah. And um, yeah, this Definitely. is a really, really neat thing. Where I mean, <laughs> I guess it's it's not to the point where I would want to make something like this to edit a spreadsheet because I could just edit the spreadsheet. Like the mobile app for for editing spreadsheets is fine. Um, but like I could imagine a scenario where maybe I have more, I'm using a spreadsheet like a database, right? And I have all these complicated relationships and instead of having to manually update, like imagine if I wanted to add a task on the spreadsheet yeah. side, it would take some work. I'd have to go figure out which was the project ID I needed. Let me go get this, you know? And it's like, you can just here, just like add a new thing type thing, send it and just like trust that it will work, which is uh, pretty amazing. Yep. The, the other thing that, and we didn't really show it, is that there's this notion of right. roles. So you can, there was a built-in role to admin or a user. You can also start oh, you to can define get your own custom roles, roles okay. and then give those behaviors. So that, you know, that's a very typical thing sure. with spreadsheets. Like the, you, you, you may not want everyone to update every part of a spreadsheet. Yeah. Anybody can be the owner. A, a specific <laughs> yeah. And so that's where our app sheet can, can come in handy. And also the, by virtue of having like, say a master spreadsheet, you can set an app sheet UI to like mm. a single tab, which then could filter and drive other yeah. stuff that's not even presented. To the yeah, you could almost build your own like, like custom yeah. controls of, of app sheet, uh, of your yeah. of a spreadsheet, right? So and you, it's a much nicer interface you, than you explaining to someone how to use a yeah. spreadsheet. Like you could have just created purely a UI for the yeah. tasks, like have like a task mm -hmm. insert form. And so, you know, that would just have its own kind of unique yeah. uh, UI for yeah, that uh, very specific cool uh, task. For sure. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think before we go, Lisa asks, can we get the slides too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the PDF. Let's, uh, so I have that slide okay. deck. Um, uh, it, we'll just save the PDF. Yeah. We're going to ship the PDF out, upload it to cloud screen. storage, make a short link, and um, maybe we'll just tell folks to uh, follow you on Twitter and, and look out for that link. You'll post it on Twitter, and I can shoot it out as yeah. a oh, follow-up. Yeah, I'll open on my Twitter stream, um, and so we can just like yeah, you know, that'd be put great. that out there for folks. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Rohan has one cool. final yeah. question oh, cool. about deploying yeah. new versions, whether or not that sends a new notification to existing users. It seemed like we have some controls over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I believe it does. Uh, again, I haven't like totally like banged through all that stuff, but yeah, uh, every time I've noticed, I I see a stream of, of uh, updates and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, people people are looking forward to see how how AppSheet develops and, and integrates with G Suite. So so thanks everybody for watching. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess yep. we'll we'll catch you uh, next Wednesday for the data show and and beyond. So I want to thank uh, Chris for joining us today. As always, you bring uh, really cool stuff to to play around with. I'm personally looking forward to sticking AppSheet as a front end in front of some of my own kind of uh, spreadsheets and trackers and things like that. It's it's going to be a game changer because you know the effort to to make one myself like ah it's not worth it. I'll just edit the spreadsheet. It's fine. But like. If I had a little, you know, build a little phone app for myself to, to play with stuff, it's all great. Um, yeah, yeah, it's I've I've heard that request <laughs> so many times uh, in, within Google. It's like I just need an app to do this, this tiny you know, little thing. I don't thing. need yeah. to like re wheel. I just need to like update, but it needs to be something more than just a spreadsheet or a little bit more functionality than what you get out of the box with right. Google Forms. And so this is where it's like, oh yeah, it's a it's a nice. Uh, yeah. Nice compliment to all that stuff. So, so yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, Chris. And thanks to all our viewers. Um, please enjoy. I guess we're coming up on the July 4th weekend. Have a great weekend, holiday weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. Wherever That's you right. may be. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot, Yufeng. It's been, been fun.